Hey everybody, it's Aaron Norris with the Norris Group. It's December 9th, and when it comes to homelessness, we need to come up with a lot better options. That and much more as we cover the biggest headlines in real estate. Up on the radio show and podcast, we've got Mark Leswig and Todd Carpenter of the National Association of Realtors. We continue our conversation about middlemen in the upcoming next couple of decades with us trying to get rid of so many middlemen via technology what real estate industries are going to be on the chopping block and where will real estate investors and realtor realtors end up seeing blockchain technology first right here in the United States in the real estate industry. That and on the radio show and podcast, don't miss it. CoreLogic home price report showed home prices increased 7% year over year in October and we are projected to increase 4.2% by next October. 10X confirms commercial real estate transactions increased in the third quarter of this year. November non-farm jobs increased 228,000, beating expectations uh, by about 8,000. Unemployment now stands at 4.1%. Wage growth, however, only hit 2.5% increase, which mix, missed expectations of 2.7%. Homeowner equity increased in the third quarter by over $800 billion, according to the latest CoreLogic report. Meanwhile, home flipping was its lowest in two years in the third quarter. Is risk creeping its way back into the mortgage markets? Well, according to Darren Bloomquist at Adam Data Solutions, the answer is maybe. There's been a recent uptick in foreclosures originating from hot markets on FHA loans back from 2014. California surprisingly isn't on the list, but Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado, and Nashville, Tennessee are. And Austin alone saw an increase of 32% in foreclosure starts. That's quite a jump. Banks are more cautious compared to pre-recession times, but some risk is definitely starting to come back into the mortgage markets. Some will argue this is exactly what we need to spur on the economy. Others are getting some deja vu. The clauses have been very busy preseason on a home renovation on their North Pole digs, apparently. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Claus hired designers Marion Bright and Doug Fur. <laughs> Uh, which helped Santa not only on the renovation, but also apparently helped him update his Zillow listing. Uh, recent upgrades include a new River Rock fireplace, gourmet kitchen featuring hot cocoa on tap, and an oven with 12 cookie settings, because who doesn't need that, and a new expanded garage and workshop. Uh, the not-so-quaint 2,500-square-foot home is a log cabin, of course, and it sits on 25 acres of picturesque land, which also includes a community of, yes, elf tiny homes, a state-of-the-art toy-making facility, and a garage with uh, plenty of room for the all-weather sleigh. The estimate on the home is expected to increase by 6.9% to $763,000 next year. I think with those kind of upgrades, we should expect at least 10%. Speaking of Zillow, we all know that the Zestimate is not an exactimate, right? Although consumers would like to think it is. Zillow says that the margin of error for the Zestimate is only 4.3%, and that's down from 8% just two years ago and 14% back in 2006 when it first started. And you know what? 4.3% is pretty darn solid. Zestimates are computed using mathematical equations based on publicly available data, included county records of past sales and valuations, and their millions of data points is what really is the secret sauce behind behind this estimate. So apparently 4% is not good enough for Zillow and that's why this year they had the, I think they had a prize of a million dollars for anybody who could come up with even a better way to help this estimate. So they're not resting on their laurels, expect this estimate to only get better. Both the House and the Senate have passed their versions of the tax bill and now it's on to reconciling both of those uh, before it goes off to the president to be signed. But both versions reduce income taxes on pass-through business income and the majority of real estate investors, that's what they use. So pass-through entities include sole proprietorships, partnerships, LLCs, and S-corporations. Uh, so those are going to be taxed uh, at a much lower level. Uh, the Senate bill apparently does not include family trusts, and there are some real estate investors who do flip in family trusts specifically. There's all different sorts of trusts, so that's a little unclear. And there's no mention of 1031 exchange. So we're still watching closely to see what makes it in, what makes it out, if there's more clarity on why they included family trusts to begin with, because the family trust issue uh, includes grocery stores, uh, hobby Lobby. So there's a lot of businesses that actually run within a family trust. If they're at a disadvantage for being in that trust, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. Did you know that San Francisco real estate is really expensive? How expensive is well, it? So expensive that a law firm bought a $3 million plane to fly its employees in from Texas. Patterson and Sheridan, an intellectual property law firm headquartered in Houston, bought a nine-scene plane to shuttle its patent lawyers to clients in the Bay Area 
once a month. They say it's cheaper than hiring local lawyers and even less expensive than relocating the Texas attorneys uh, with business in Silicon Valley to the area. The move has allowed the firm to keep costs low for their clients since most of them work, since most of the work is done in Houston and the lawyers have an opportunity to work while they're in the plane. So you sort of got this captured talent and have nothing else to do besides work. And the median rent, I think right now is something like $4,300, $4,400 in San Francisco. So that's pretty bad when you're flying in talent once a month to make it happen. So homelessness increased for the first time in seven years. At the beginning of the year, 553,742 people were living in shelters or on the streets across the country, up 0.7% from the prior year. The issue almost is entirely due to affordability and homelessness on the West Coast, including Los Angeles, Seattle, San Diego, the Bay Area. HUD Secretary Ben Carson said, we're not making great progress in the places where the rents are going up the fastest, uh, are going up faster than the incomes. Los Angeles alone reported a 26% increase from last year. If you have not been downtown, it is, it's just insane to watch and it's hard to think that people live like this. And you don't want not to address the issue for a lot of reasons, not just because it's a humanitarian issue we should all be concerned about, but as real estate investors and for us in the real estate community, it will get handled and we might not like how it's handled. So what do you think? What should we be doing to solve homelessness right here in California? I'd love to hear what you got to say. If you're on YouTube, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a beat. If you're on Facebook, please don't forget to not only like the Norris Group page, but don't forget to add us to your C first list and with notifications on. Leave your comments below the video. And if we miss something, share the story on our comment sections on either YouTube or Facebook and we'll make sure to include it on our blog at thenorrisgroup.com forward slash blog. We're launching an all new chat next week called Cash Out or Stay Put and we're launching that on December 12th at SDCIA in San Diego at their annual holiday party. Always one of the biggest parties of the year. If you're in the area, we'd love to see you. December 14th, I will be on a note panel at Oshiria in Costa Mesa. January 2nd, we'll be back on tour doing Cash Out or Stay Put with Prosperity Through Real Estate in Los Angeles. On the 9th, we'll be doing it in the Coachella Valley in the Inland Empire at CV Ria. And then on the 10th, we'll be doing it at Robert Hall and Associates. So we're going to be in most Southern California markets in short order doing this chat. So hopefully we'll get to see you out and about. For more information on hard money loans, including fix and flip, buy and hold, and new construction, check out thenorrisgroup.com. And for more information on passive investing with trustees, check out tngtrustees.com. With that, have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you next week.